Jury deliberations are set to begin today in Bill Cosby's sexual assault retrial. In closing arguments yesterday, the defense characterized Cosby's alleged victim, Andrea Constant, as a pathological liar. They also called her a con artist, citing a $3.4 million civil settlement back in 2006. Meanwhile, the prosecution told jurors Cosby preyed on women, saying that he was far from the adored father figure he played on TV. Cosby faces up to 30 years in prison if convicted. With more on the retrial now, we want to bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. So, Ricky, what do you make of yesterday's closing arguments? Well, they were long mm -hmm. and they were full of anger on both sides. You had two hours for the defense, three hours for the prosecution. It was very personal, it seemed to me, not only about the causes, but also between the lawyers. Mm. So what you have from the defense is a theory of the case that is very different than the first trial. The first trial was a romantic uh, relationship gone sour. This trial, according to the defense, is about Andrea Constant, the accuser, as a con artist, a woman who is in it for the money, who fabricated a story of lack of consent versus the prosecution who has the ability by law to go last and therefore getting the last word they can look at what the defense just said and the defense saying con artist prosecution says wait a minute who's the con man in this case mm. the con is bill cosby and they did i have to say from the prosecution side a brilliant job of deflecting the vigor of the defense. Nevertheless, we have to remember this case is about facts. It's not about emotion. Right. But they have one accuser plus five other accusers on the prosecution side versus reasonable doubt on the defense side. And of course, this is happening now during the Me Too, the rise of the Me Too movement. Oh, the ability now, the juror had the ability, jurors had the ability to hear from other women who say they were found themselves in similar circumstances, more than just one other woman. Um, could this end in another hung jury, do you think? Anything is possible. Mm -hmm. If you look at the first trial, the first trial had, by uh, many persons' estimation, a weak case in Andrea Constant, that this was a woman who uh, had a complaint that was originally, when Crosby was arrested, 12 years old, by the time it got to trial, much older than that. Mm -hmm. This was a woman who had had numerous contacts, hundreds of phone calls with Bill Cosby before, during, and after this alleged event. Right. Had visited with him after, had brought him gifts, had gone up to his room at the Foxwood Casino after. So it was a weak, weak case supported by one woman who also got really destroyed on cross-examination. There was no Me Too movement at that time, and at that time, the basically quote-unquote uncorroborated word of a sexual assault victim with her type of conduct was presumed not to be truthful enough to be considered proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Cut to October of last year, because I look at that as really the beginning of the days of reckoning here in a cultural transformation of Me Too. Now you have Andrea Constance, same story, but boosted by five stories of five other women who all tell of a same common scheme or plan, an MO, if you will, a signature, where you have a man who brings a more vulnerable woman into his abode or his confines where he then administers a drug to render her unable to consent. Well, fool me once, fool me twice. Mm -hmm. So the jury is in a very different position where now the elephant in the room is Me Too. It's mm -hmm. not legal, it's not something they can consider, but we are not immune to the Me Too movement. All right, Ricky Kleeman, I know you're sticking around until we find out what the result of I'm this trial is. I'm never leaving you, Anne-Marie. Right, well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ricky.